Hello. We're going to polish shoes. The first thing to do, obviously, if there is a shoe tree in it, is to take it out. The next thing we want to do is to take out the laces. First of all, observe how they're put in so you can put them back in exactly the same way. The reason we take out shoelaces is because we want to make sure that the tongue itself is also polished. If, if, if that's uh, emitted over time, it'll lose its color and become quite dirty. The tools we have to use are a wax polish or a cream polish. The distinction is that the cream is much better for keeping the leather supple, whereas the wax is better for waterproofing. So the best strategy for your shoes is to one time clean them with wax, the next time use your polish. Today we are going to use the polish. Other tools we have, I use a toothbrush when I'm traveling because I need to travel light. Um, I use that for applying the polish or I also use a cloth, particularly when I'm using the cream. Um, normally one would use a, an on brush which has a stiffer bristle at about half the size of the off brush. One also has a chamois or a chamois or a sheepskin leather to give the final polish. First thing is, get off any dust or dirt that may be on the shoe. Then we apply the polish, and in this particular case I'm going to use the toothbrush to hit the areas such as here, and also where there's a ridge here, which the cloth is not going to be able to reach. I'm also uh, going to hit the areas of the shoe where color may be missing. It may have been scuffed off on the toe, inside heel, outside heel. I'd hit those areas first with a round motion like this and then having hit polished the whole shoe I'll go back and do a second layer on that one area where there's maybe missing color. Finally um, one does want to make sure to hit the underside of the shoe by the heel here. Reason being that this is often exposed if you're sitting with your uh, legs crossed or if you're kneeling this part of the shoe will be exposed and it does look so much better if there is color here as opposed to the dirt that one cannot avoid having on the actual sole of the shoe. And one of course would only do that with a leather sole, not with the rubber or plastic soles that one has these days. One puts the, that shoe down and works on the second one, and by the time the second one is done, the, the uh, polish would have had time to soak into the leather sufficiently. So the next step is to polish it off. I hold the brush like this so as to stop it flying off when my wrist is flying around like this at a rapid pace. You want a light flick of the brush and that's preferable to using your elbow which you'll, a lot of people do it this way but you'll notice that the, the speed that one can get or generate the number of times over the leather is much uh, less frequent than if one is using a rapid flick of the wrist. Having completed the polishing of the shoe, one would then uh, move to the chamois to give it a final polish and also paying particular attention to the top here and here to make sure that all the polish has been removed otherwise it will end up on the bottom of one's cuffs of one's trousers. The polishing of a pair of shoes should take about five minutes maximum. Um, this is particularly important if one has an awful lot of shoes to do. If one follows this particular regimen and looks after one's shoes, not only will one's uh, guest or employer look sharp, but their shoes will also last a long time. Uh, these, this particular pair of mine have lasted me 36 years, during which I've worn them uh, perhaps 50% of the time, uh, just because they're very comfortable. Polishing shoes I find to be very uh, therapeutic and pleasurable to do, as well as very worthwhile, and I wish you much uh, enjoyment and success. Thank you.